In this video, we pick a dataset suitable for the task of multi-label classification from Kaggle and look into its images and ground truth files. We will be using this dataset in the next few videos for developing a multi-label classifier using an artificial neural network. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Dawn. So today we're gonna introduce a data set that is suitable for multi-label classification. I found this data set on Kaggle. The title is Multi-Label Image Classification Data Set. So it's full of images, which is suitable because, you know, images are more tangible um, when it comes to just visually looking at the experiments and looking at the results. And if we just scroll down a little bit, this data set has 10 labels and for a given image, uh, you could have a variety of different classes in, in, in terms of the objects inside that image. For example, motorcycle, truck, train, bus, cycle, sitar, ektara, and so on and so forth. So for a given image, you might have more than one of these class objects into it, hence multi-label classification. So when you download the status over here, um, and you go into the folder, multi-label modified, that's the name of the folder, in this folder, you have the images, right? But you have multiple CSV files for the ground truth or the class labels. I did a little bit of digging to decide which one is the best one to use. And in my opinion, this one is the best. And I'm just gonna tell you what I mean. So let's open the first one, right? I looked at the actual, uh, you know, columns. For example, here you have the name of the actual image file. So if you actually go to the images folder, you have the actual names of the images, right? So image91.jpg, and if you just open it, you see the actual image, right? So for every image name, you have the number of classes that, classes of objects that actually belong to this, um, to this particular image, which means, for example, in image one, uh, bus and person are in, present in that image, or in image two, there's a sitar, in the, in the image. And you have this nice sort of uh, series of columns that show you for each one of the objects or the classes, um, which one of them are actually present in this particular image. So for example, uh, for this particular image, uh, you can know, you can see that wherever there's a one, it means that object exists. So in this case, a boss, a boss and a person exists in that image and nothing else uh, um, actually exist in this image. So in other words, this image belongs to two class labels. So that's why we keep saying multi-label classification. Uh, in a traditional classical, you know, classification um, scenario, these vectors will be one hot encoding vectors, meaning that only one element could be one and everything else has to be zero. But in this case, you can have more than uh, one, um, one class label present. At, at the same time for one given instance. Now, the reason that I'm dismissing this particular CSV file is that the number of images here um, is actually more than the images that are presented in the actual data set. And the reason that I'm, for example, um, ignoring, let's say this one, this other CSV file, is that, well, in here, um, we have the name of the class labels, right, for example, for, image 11.jpg, uh, we have the objects tabla and harmonium, but we don't have the actual, you know, vector of labels, zeros and ones. So those are the labels that you will need if you want to create a multi-label classifier, right? So it would give us a little bit too much trouble to actually, you know, have to generate those, uh, you know, vectors ourselves. And we don't really want to do that. And the last one that I'd like to show you is that, again, a similar, a similar situation here, but again, the number of images is actually more than uh, what the actual data set is, you know, presenting in terms of number of images. So long story short, I picked this particular CSV file, reduce modified. So I've used that particular CSV file and I've renamed it labels.csv. And if you just go into the folder of images just to see what they look like, you have a particularly very nice sort of variety of images here. And 
a given image could belong to more than one class table at a time. So this makes it ideal for our case. So we can actually like, for example, make a convolutional neural network to actually do multi-label classification here. All right, great. So in this video, we learned about the data set that we'll be using for developing a multi-label classification algorithm. In the next video, we will use Python to get comfortable with this data set and do some visualization. See you in the next one.